Hi, welcome back to Kinetics and Reaction Mechanisms in Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to go over a relatively important skill that is applicable in all sorts of chemistries. And even when you start getting into more biological stuff, it's still very important. You need to be able to know what the units of a rate constant are. We need to know this for zeroth order, first order, and second order. Those are the most common three. Of those three, first and second order are most common. And then also, if we wanted to do third order, we can do that also. All right. Um, we, third order reactions are usually very rare, but we do need to consider those just in the event that we run across them. And I'm going to show you a method that works every time to be able to calculate what the units of the rate constant are. Let's worry about this for first order first. All right. So for first order reactions, I'm just going to use generally if we have some reaction where the reactant is A, I'm going to do that. So let's say our rate is going to be K times the concentration of A. All right, that's a first order reaction. Several rules here that are going to work for all of these, and you have to remember these. The rate, and when I put this equal sign and bracket signs, that means rate is in units of, it's going to be in units of molar per second. Okay? Concentration of A is always going to be in units of molar. Okay? If I have concentration of A squared, that's going to be molar squared. If I have concentration of A cubed, that's going to be molar cubed, and so on and so forth. If you had concentration of A to the seventh power, that would be molar to the seventh power. And really, I should put these in brackets. These are in units of. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is just simply, instead of plugging in numbers, I'm just going to plug in units and see what the units of the rate constant are. All right. So the first thing I would recommend doing before you do anything is solve for k. All right. So for a first order reaction, if I divide both sides by a, k is going to be rate over the concentration of a. All right. So to figure out the units, let's do this. Rate is going to be molar per second divided by concentration to the first. That's just m. All right? So m over s divided by m. Hopefully you see m cancels. And so my units for k for a first order reaction are going to be 1 over seconds. Or you could see this as per second like this. All right. So if I'm looking specifically at a first order reaction, I'm looking for 1 over s that happens to be this one. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's do this for the other ones. We're now going to do second order. So I know that rate for a second order, and I'm going to, this was for the first order, k2, k for a second order reaction, is going to be a squared because it's second order. I'm going to do the same thing. Let's solve this for k2. When I solve for K2, I get rate over concentration of A squared. Again, plug in units. What are the units of rate? Molar per second. What's the units of A squared? Molar squared. Now, remember this. Whenever you do a division problem, remember, it's the thing on the top, the numerator, when you divide by something in the denominator, it's multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is multiplying times 1 over m squared. And hopefully you see that one factor of m cancels to where you're left with 1 over molar seconds. Another way of seeing this is inverse molar inverse seconds. All right, And that will be the rate constant for a second order reaction. So 1 over molar, 1 over seconds. And sure enough, I see one that looks just like that. That's for a second order reaction. Let's go ahead and do third order. Third order reaction. All right. Apply the same thing. Rate for a third order reaction is going to be the third order rate constant times A cubed. Rearrange for K. K3 is going to be rate divided by concentration of A cubed. Simple enough, right? So K3, plug in units. 
rate is going to be molar per second divided by, and then a cubed has units of molar cubed. Now remember, if you take molar per second divided by m cubed, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of m cubed, or times 1 over m cubed. And notice that this m cancels the one factor here, leaving us squared. This is going to be expressed as molar inverse squared times second inverse. All right, so either one of these will work for units of a third over order rate constant. And so I'm looking for 1 over m squared, 1 over seconds, and sure enough, I do see one of those. 1 over m squared per second. All right, that's a third order rate constant. All right, now I'm looking for a zeroth order. It's not really so much of a trick question, although it can trip people up on exams. All right, what is the rate for a zeroth order reaction? Well, it's just the rate constant. Okay, it doesn't depend on a because it's zeroth order. We can even plug an a in here and just put a zero as an exponent, but remember, anything to a zero exponent is just one. So that means we don't actually need this in here because if we raise it to the zeroth power, it's just one. All right? Okay, let's just plug in numbers. Zero order the rate constant is equal to the rate. The units of rate are molar per second. So for a zeroth order reaction, the rate constant has units of molar per second. And sure enough, I see one of those. There you go. All right? This one right here doesn't exist. We're never going to use something that looks like that. All right? So hopefully this technique makes sense to you in terms of how to find out the rate constant. The reason this is important is because when you start getting to exams and they say, oh, this is for a first order reaction, this is for a second order reaction, zero with order, whatever, and they ask you to solve for a rate constant, most professors are diligent enough to notice when you put wrong units for that rate constant. So you want to be able to figure out what the rate constant's units are. So even if you get the number right, you also get the units right. Because you can get the number right for the rate constant, you get the units wrong, and you'll lose points. So make sure you're able to do this for your exam. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you for watching.